Hi everybody, this is Mr. Fowley, and welcome to Podcast 3.1. Subscribe to Private Characters, Clearly on Bounce, and Kevin Butterman. Go check. Follow the exact rule. Check. Explain to everything single, double, and triple. One, two, three. Explain to everything molecular formula and structural formula. Pretty easy. Given the name of molecular compound rated correct formula, we could do some naming. Hey, how about that? When bonds form, energy is released. When bonds break, energy is absorbed. That's it. I like to call this BARF. Break. Absorb. Ba. Release. Releasing energy. Forms. Bonds. What should it be? How bad handwriting do I have? All right. So let's hop to the next one. Covalent bonds. Covalent means, oh, share. The prefix co means share. Oh, like a communist. Oh, share. Or if you live in a commune, oh, you take up the garbage, I'll mow the lawn. Oh, share. So, covalent bonds share between two non metals. They are directional covalent bonds, and we'll talk about some non directional covalent bonds later. But they're directional covalent bonds, meaning here's X, here's Y. These two people share, only two people share. It fills your octet, so remember eight is stable. And it double counts like your house. Whoa, why did that jump? Double counts like your house, so for NH3. So NH3 has electrons like this, and then you put the H's around. And if you recall, and I'm sure you do, single electrons form bonds. Look, they formed a bond. Look, there's a bond. <gasps> there's a bond, too. Oh, look at all the bonds. So to show that nitrogen has eight, it has two, four, Six, eight. So nitrogen has eight. Now hydrogen has two. <gasps> but it, it counts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Each hydrogen has two. Now two doesn't need, I'm sorry, hydrogen doesn't need eight. Because on the top row, remember the very top part of the pair table? Whee! There's the rest of us. Right. So these guys are at the tip top, tippy top, tip, tip, tip top. Okay? So it double counts. The electrons double count when you share. So if I said, um, if I was to pick on somebody and I said, Dominic, uh, do you have a house? Yes. Do your parents have a house? Yes. Does your sister have a house? Yes. Do you have three houses? No. Unless Dominic, of course, is one of the uber rich people that has three houses, a yacht, and field. There are two types of covalent bonds. The first type of covalent bond is nonpolar covalent. Nonpolar covalent is two nonmetals, which we said earlier. Nonpolar covalent bonds, electrons are shared evenly. They have an electronegativity. Remember, EN is electronegativity. This is electronegativity. Difference of 0 to 0 0.4. <coughs> Excuse me. If you are bonded to yourself, you share evenly. Oh, sure. see how they share evenly? Isn't that cute? Oh, little, little rats. C to H is 0.4 and nonpolar. Most of the time, you're bonded to yourself. C to H is an exception. Nonpolar covalent bonds have the lowest BP, that's boiling point, and MP, that's melting point. That would make sense if you have the lowest boiling point, you also have the lowest melting point. Nonpolar covalent bonds never conduct electricity because there are no ions, and they are poor heat conductors. Polar covalent bonds aren't very different, they're two nonmetals mostly. A polar covalent bond has uneven sharing. Okay? So I said Nina has to share a car with her sister. And Nina's sister. sister. So Nina's car, right? Nina can have the car according to her sister, who of course outranks her and rules her and everything. Her sister gets the car from 6 a.m. until midnight. Now Nina gets to share it, but she gets it from midnight until 6 a.m which is a much worse time. Oh, it's uneven sharing. The atom with a higher electronegativity will have a slight negative charge. The other atom will have a slight positive charge. Okay. So in this case, since uh, Nina's sister gets the car longer, it would be negative, evil sister. And Nina hardly ever gets the car. Nina is positive. Well, maybe there's a flaw there. But, you know. um, a molecule with an uneven distribution of charge is said to have a dipole. Di means two. Pole means end. 
The delta symbol, just to show you how I draw a delta symbol, the delta symbol represents the partial charge on each side of the molecule is indicated. The arrow symbol with a plus tail points towards the negative side of the molecule. Polar covalent bonds dissolve in water. Okay, so I look at my periodic table. Um, nitrogen, I'm sorry, ox mm, yes, oxygen has a greater electronegativity. O has bigger En. Remember the trend is closer to fluorine. So that means it's more electronegative. So I would draw that symbol to indicate it on that bond. Or if I had N to O and I wanted to show my deltas, oxygen is a little bit negative. Oops. The, oh, I don't know how to get rid of that. I'll redo it then. N to O. Oxygen is a little bit negative. And nitrogen is a little bit positive. So delta just means a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Naming molecular compounds. So now we have to name these guys. Remember, there's always two nonmetals, so we can figure out how to name them like this. And use prefixes. Mono is one, two, three, four, five. Tetra is four. It's not quad. It's tetra. Okay. Di, don't accidentally put bi. It's di. Hexa is six. Hepta is seven. Octa is eight. Nona is nine. Deca is ten. And then these compounds always end in eyed and sound good, which sounds ridiculous. So copy that down. Ha uh ha, -huh, I'm faster than you. Let CO be your guide. Now you know CO is carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide. So no mono on the first one. We do use first prefixes, but no mono on the first one. And no double O's. It's not carbon monoxide. It's carbon monoxide. So let's try this. SF6. S is sulfur. And no mono on the sulfur. Sulfur, six is hexa, hexa fluoride. Ends in iodine, and sounds good. P is phosphorus. Five is penta, penta chloride. Ends in iodine, and sounds good. Now I have a prefix of two without mono. So for the first one, so it would be di xenon octa bromide, which is extremely rare because noble gases typically don't form bonds with the same did. H2O is a covalently bonded molecule and it's called water. Oh, tri nitrogen N3 monosulfide. S. Notice I did use mono on the second one. Notice how it ends in I and sounds good. Hexa, 6, sulfur, S, 6, dichloride, Cl, 2. Deca, 10, nitrogen, N, 10, monoxide. Oh, that's it. Structural forms convey the arrangement of atoms. Structural formula, structural formula. And molecular formulas gives the count of atoms. Molecular formulas, this one would be C2H6. Molecular formula. That's all. So this just counts them up. C2H6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm a good counter. I'm very good at counting. Match the structural formula to the appropriate molecular formula. One carbon, four hydrogens. Here's a carbon. One, two, three, four. Wow. N8, one N3Hs. Wow. F, oh, ah, I hope there's a hundred questions like this. H, H, O, H, 2, O. Amazing. Single valence electrons form bonds. We talked about this before. So this is on the last test, as a matter of fact. So see how hydrogen's valence shell has one. Now, here's the weird thing we didn't talk about much last hour, or last test. Um, if you have one, you say, beep. carbon has four single electrons. It doesn't have two pairs. Carbon will have four single electrons. So it'll form four bonds. So given a structure like this, you should be able to figure out, there's a bond, there's a bond, there's a bond, three bonds, two bonds, two bonds. 
And then notice if you're in the same family, you form the same number of bonds. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. There are three types of covalent bonds. Type one. Now remember before we have polar and nonpolar. Here is, I guess we'll just call this type whatever. One of the other types is single bonds. Single bonds share two electrons. They're the longest and they're the weakest. This means they're the weakest. So the weaker in double, weaker in triple. Here's the single bond. So notice it's longer. 135 is longer than those. And it would also be weaker. Double bonds share four electrons. Okay? So what that would look like is if I had carbon and it started out with this. Carbon can put um, two electrons right here. And then if I had oxygen, I had two electrons right here. I can go, wee, and then throw something else on the end here. Ah, don't come back. They're smaller than single, but longer than, ah, not double. They're longer than triple. Shame on me. They're weaker than triple. And they're strong, not stronger than double. They're stronger than single. Sorry. That's it. And then this shows um, their strength. So here's a double bond, 133. The length is longer than the triple and shorter than the double. As far as the strength goes, this is strength. You don't need to copy down this chart, but you do need to realize that this works. Energy, right? So the energy to break a double is bigger than a single, less than a triple. Nope. Triple bonds share six electrons. This shows the six, and six electron share. They're the shortest and the strongest. I think you get the idea. Come on. Review. Single, double, triple, long and weak to short and strong. Covalent bonds share electrons. Aww. And are rather weak. Oh, no. I'm used to being able to hit F10, and I don't know how to make it stop. Oh, no. I don't know how to make it stop. Oh, well. Doodles.